So there we go. And three, two, one, let's hit it. As we are now officially live on a new version of a familiar map, we're watching Orange Pest playing under the alias Forsworn as the United States Forces, as Recon Support Company. His opponent today is Jibber Jabber Jobber, playing as his own name and playing as his mighty Wehrmacht factional Ost here, as the community would prefer they were called. This is Bayo version 2. You may remember it from such map orientations as this, but it has been made West versus East. So big props to uh, Spanky for the uh, maneuverability in his own thinking. And let's check out the changes. So this is that uh, area which used to be hedgerows upon hedgerows upon hedgerows. And now the fuel is opened up, so it's much more um, easier for, for Axis or support weapon players to hold it down. You don't, don't no longer have to be light vehicles and infantry to win on this map, basically. My favourite feature of the map, to be honest, are these hedgerows here and here. This just speaks to me and says, this guy has made a, a map that should, in theory, work. Because it's got what I like to call flow blockers. Now, imagine that Company of Heroes is made of um, fast torrents of water, okay? Just stick with me here. We're going to talk about flow, laminar flow and turbulent flow. Imagine this water is like two Hadoukens in Street Fighter and they're hitting each other in the middle. It's going to be turbulent, it's going to be all over the place, it's going to be chaos. So if we had a 2D plane that was just a blank map, it would be all over the place. So you need just the right amount of objects and land features to ensure that the play fl flows nicely. So it's a lot about feel, and it's a lot about, do you, do you enjoy watching this game today? Do you think it was a good battle? Do you think that the engagements were intellectually stimulating? And if you can say that, having watched this game today, Spanky might have made a good map. And that is the incredibly subjective nature of Company of Heroes map making in a nutshell. Jibba Jabba Jabba pushes forward to the MG42. He faces East. He is the player in the East, so... Uh, Interesting there. Pioneer is going to come in for the close quarter combat to make work of the suppression. But here comes the new rifleman of Orange Pest, the forsworn combatant of today. Meanwhile, we have an engagement with the Ostrupen of Jibber Jabba Jabba getting picked on by the rifleman. But they make use of the tractor and they put the damage down. Rifleman on retreat. Any negative cover here? Watch my curse. It doesn't look like there is. And the rifleman are focus firing these bad boys anyway. Meanwhile, MG42 pops around the hedgerow. Now he'll be able to wait it out because this flank will take a while. Meanwhile, he'll be able to reposition. The pioneers will be able to give him sight. Elsewhere, rear echelons are pushing the pressure down. Let's look at the territorial control. So thus far, we have a... That, that's a cutoff there and the fuel is connected. MG42 is repositioning. Jibber Jabber Jobber is, of course... He's gone for very, very quick battle phase one. Only two Ostrup and into Panzer Grenadier. And everybody knows why. Known as Derby Hat in the forums. Triple J loves to get that 251 half track out and go for a bit of spray and pray flame loveliness. Also an S spine field, so not interesting that he's actually spent on that there. Is it a trap? Is he a kind of baiting Orange Pest into thinking and he's gone for Oh, this is sexy. So instead of going for a fast flamer, he's gone for a pioneer flamer and an S mine field. And he's using the MG in the middle, using this spiny hedgerow feature to his advantage. So he's got a protected flank and he's pushing forward. This means he's going for a pin. Pioneers coming in. Riflemen are stuck in a hard place and they've got a rock on the other side. This rifleman here has low health, so if he pushes this way, he might get hit by the S-mine. Jibber Jabber Jobber has taken the cutoff, ladies and gentlemen. A pin is coming in only four minutes into this battle. Now, by the way, we'll get to the region of the game where AE might have distracted the players because I couldn't originally see the game in auto match, but I can see it now. This map is looking sexy now, I must admit. Took a few looks at it before I've even watched this game, and I thought... 
some maps have a terrible birth. I actually loved Bayo because I'm an allied, mostly an allied player in all two maps. So for me, it was pretty good. Um, <laughs> but to be honest, I can already tell you this is looking a lot better. We have a second MG42 now, well and truly protecting flanks and also baiting him into the S mines. Rifleman cannot reclaim what they want. And Orange Base is going for a fast power pack. Howard, sir, he's got on the upgraded captain who's going into S mine territory right now. There you go. 60 munitions, very well spent. However, flank coming in. Can he get the traversal off? No, he's going to pack up and reposition. This sounds ridiculous, but you could have actually maybe even gone for a few uh, supporting, supporting crew member kills there with the MG gun crew, crew members. Because that rifleman had such little health. I know it's crazy, the amount of DPS they give off is minuscule, but sometimes it actually isn't as bad as you think, especially when the riflemen are pushing at you. But probably never listen to AE if he ever suggests anything. That's always a good rule of thumb. Meanwhile, Panzer Grenadiers with eight kills. This is not a cutoff. That is the cutoff there, so munitions will keep coming in. We have no healing right now. Look how low health these guys are. Criminally low health. These are the guys there that uh, have four squad members, but that is nowhere near 80% of a health bar, is it? Think about it. The health bar is meant to be around here, so that's around 50% health on each model. Kimbo keeping up the Kimbo... Annihilasis. <laughs> Did you get it instead of Kimbo Mad Slice? It doesn't really make sense, does it, that pun? Oh, shut up, eh? Um, anyway, Kimbo with the comments and chat. Orange Pest getting wrecked. It would certainly appear like he's had a rough start, let's say. Double fuel for the Wehrmacht player, Triple J. And he does now have the 251 out. Sexy camo, must be said. It is a best of one in the semi-finals today. We're going to have a best of three final. Um, the other semi-final, I'll just spoil it, does include Kimbo, but we won't spoil his opponent and who it's going to be. It is all going to be on Bayo, and it is on Tawny Mode. Tawny Mode removes abandoned criticals, main gun criticals, planes killing. They can still do damage, but they don't kill outright anymore. They've had the crush critical removed. And um, the fourth change is that tanks can now fly. So we don't want to change the game. It's all about removing the uh, the really terrible um, RNG. If you're watching this live on um, Twitch, please type uh, exclamation mark tawny mod. Um, or possibly MLNZ for Mann Zweimal, which is, of course, the huge Master League tournament. Nice healing from the half track from Triple J. He unloads some very fresh-looking Panzer Grenadiers. Oh, but we've had the forsworn half-track of Orange Pess. Goes into handbrake mode. That's taking advantage of the fact that we do not have a pack out at the moment. And this has allowed Orange Pest now to take his own fuel for the first time in a long time. Orange Pest has pushed back into this game. Also having the pack out, it's down on the S mine field. Bit of um, clearing there. Not a bad little game so far. You'll notice I've got the soundtrack back on. Kind of, uh, this is definitely not a best of five match, by the way. I'm going to stop the misinformation there. I've just noticed my overlay currently says best of five. Is that central? You tell me. Should be now. There we go. That'll do the job. And what have we been missing? We've seen a an attempted push in. That's a little bit foolish. And maybe the MG42... Could have got DPS there, but the traverse was quick, and Orange Pest was quick enough to get outside the scope of it. Meanwhile, low health Panzer Grenadiers are getting picked off. They'd be wise to retreat, but not before they throw a juicy bundle. Orange Pest was manned to it, and um, Manly ran away. Meanwhile, we've got uh, the captain. Oh, great. It does take out the MG42 before it was able to recrew, but the Pioneer will take it up very soon. And, uh, of course, now we'll be able to continue the onslaught. Surprise, we've not had an... An AT gun from uh, Orange Pest, to be honest. But maybe he's got bigger things in mind, I suppose. Could have got an airdropped uh, combat group, perhaps. Rifleman about to go down to the MG. Unfortunate there. He was too worried about the Faust in the meantime. And the Pack 40 is also pushing in. Pack Howie will spot it, however. So AT 
Sorry, AA half track should be fine. Look at this. MG cycling into the half track to be re Sorry, to be healed. I was gonna say re-healed, but that makes no, no sense. Rehealthed? Brought back to life? I mean there's so many ways to describe what is something very uh very standard, but it's a lovely change that came in, in last year, wasn't it? That half tracks could heal. I think it was early last year before the 1v1 Elite Showdown it, this change came in. So I want to say spring 2019 that we saw a very late change to Company of Heroes 2. Um, obviously this game was released in 2000... Sorry, just listen to the music here. Best bit of the soundtrack in my opinion. The uh, Moscow City Choir kicks in. We've got a Greyhound out, upgrading to the Pinfall. It's going in for the half track. It tries to get past the tank traps and does do that just about. Makes it past the pack 40 and gets the kill. However, a Faust is now threatening. Is there anything on the retreat pass? But he gets it with a juicy Talamine. Not spotted on camera, but very good all the same. God, that was a deep Talamine, wasn't it? Right on the cusp of the hedgerow there. And... Um, Orange Pest just can't find his luck right now. Making great use of the spiny hedge. Oh, getting a nice rear armor shot. What was I saying? Oh yeah, well, fantastic that they introduced the half-track healing change. It's one of those small changes that has made Wehrmacht a lot more playable now. And also means you don't just see Flame a half-track every bloody time. Pax pushing in. As the uh, flamethrower does the work. Meanwhile, bundle tossed yet again, causing the rifleman to push out of cover and then they retreat into it. There's a gap in the hedgerow there, so that's where the algorithm pushed them on retreat. Meanwhile, AA half track won't be one more shot from the pack, perhaps. Can't quite get it off. It's just a juicy S minefield, wasn't it? I have to say that this S minefield psychologically has meant that this hedgerow has not been pushed as much as it could have been. Uh, which has meant that Jibber Jabber Job has been able to set up, and on Bayo version 1, you would not have been able to play like this. Big gap in the hedgerow here. I have to say that that makes ambulances very killable. I know Spanky will be watching this, and he just has to be a little bit wary that uh, having such a large gap could be dangerous. But then again... If you look, there is a wall there and a Sherman bulldozer there and a garrison there. So maybe he's got it covered. And maybe we should just listen to Spanky. He is, of course, uh, from Estonia, Spanky. He once um, designed me a map to test things for a, a YouTube series I did years ago. So I sent him a GTX 980 after... Um, a lovely man called Dr. Wox bought me a better graphics card. So yeah, that's how the community works. You know, everybody helps each other out. I sent him a one-year-old graphics card that wasn't really cutting the mustard for casting and str playing at the same time. And uh, yeah, nice little story there, I thought. Sent it all the way to Estonia. <laughs> and then to his uh, apartment buildings, yeah. It could travel all the way. Royal Mail and then probably some German carrier. And then to Estonian mail and got all the way there. Bundle laid on retreat. Captain will be do well to survive and he does not do it because the Panzer Grenadiers are almighty in their assault. The enemy is taking our territory. Orange Pest, I tell you what though, he's not going away anytime soon. He's going for a double pack how it's a build. <laughs> With the AA half track. And now he's got the M157 mil. Some people consider this the best AT gun in the game, not because of its penetrative qualities, although it does have the HVAP. It is all about that rate of fire that is a little bit better than the other AT guns. Oh, here we go, incendiary rounds on the A half track. Can it get out of dodge? But thankfully, the pack howitzer kills the gunning crew member. However, the rear echelons will not be so lucky. But there's the pack shot from afar. Was it? Yes, it was. Pack shot from afar, all the way down range there. And um, we're going to be looking for some cluster bombs on the Panzer Grenadiers, causing a lot of health damage. There's nothing to polish them off, though, is there? These riflemen would have been good, wouldn't they? Maybe a pack how we shot on retreat. Could you imagine that? That would be glorious, wouldn't it? Come on, guys. You've got to get into position. 
Because this Panzer Grenadier squad is for the taking. They're so low on health. No, but here it is. Panzer IV with a beautiful camouflage scheme. Orange Pest is battling strong to stay into this mini tournament. For Metal Gear Solid 5 and another game Spanky is providing. In-game uh, volume is quiet. I will up it now. There you go. Thank you for the um, for the tip in chat. Should be a little bit better now. Tell me how the voice is relative to game sound. Didn't have time to check it. Something witty says it's all right. We'll go with something witty. He's a witty guy. Oh, Panzer Grandiers. Tell you what, Jibber Jabber Jobs improved as a player so much. He's so mindful in this game. He hasn't put a step wrong, in all honesty. Another Greyhound with another upgrade. Is it desperation from Orange Best to be going for a Greyhound when he's up against a Panzer IV? Could well be seen as that. Well, then again, he might know what he's doing better than we do. We've got another cluster bomb, is it? Or is this... Yes, indeed it is. Here they've come. Here they fall. Do they wipe out the veterans? Yes, they do. No longer has access to incendiary rounds. Trench far up there from the Ostrupen. Great people in chat. Fantastic commenters like Elner, Strummingbird, Comrade Strelok. Join us on Patreon. And you can have your votes on the maps, the tournament concepts, the grounds getting snared. Panzer IV coming in perhaps? No. It's just a, it's a good way to support the tournament scene. 100% proceeds go to prize pools. And AE's Hawaiian Vacation 2020. Oh, I mean, just prize pools. Missing right now against a Brumbear Corpse. That's pretty cool. I like looking at that. That's nice. Panzer Grenadiers coming in. They're making use of their coordinated abilities. Combined arms, a passive ability when near... Panzers. They blitz into action. Getting lowered received accuracy and higher movement speed. Just so damn cool. Double nades. So threatening. Jibber jabber jobber is beginning to close in. As the pack howitzers force the Panzer Grenadiers away. We no longer have a half track alive, so we can't... Uh, Help out too much there. M180 guns do open up. Forcing the Panzer IV out of position. This uh, victory point is currently keeping Orange Pest in the game, quite frankly. He does have a support weapon build that can sustain him, perhaps. You know, two pack howitzers, two AT guns and two riflemen. Just about giving him fighting ability. But what's he up against? Vetted Panzer Grenadiers. Ostrupen for capping. Two... MG42s that have barely put a foot wrong if they weren't for those falling cluster bombs earlier. And now, two Panzer IVs. It's looking like a good map in all honesty. Bayo 2, I'm liking it. I'm interested to see what people think in chat as well. Oh, look at I like that bunker. Have you seen that before? It looks like the Maginot line or something. It's got a uh, Panther turret, hasn't it? <laughs> That's cool. My feedback for... Um, for Spanky was, by the way, was make these um, traversing lines less... Sorry, the flanking routes make them less prominent because they kind of were a little bit redundant. But also add some bloody character to the map and he's clearly done that. So many cool little nifty features right now. We've got a Brumbear Husk, uh, destroyed buildings, this kind of garage there. First time I've seen that on a map. What have we got over here? Sunset. Um, he could make the box a little bit bigger, couldn't he? But... Other than that, it's really nice aesthetically. Panzer IVs acting in unison. The Greyhound is about to surely die. And there goes the Greyhound. First Panzer IV misses. Second does not. Needs to get out of there. M1 AT guns are in position, however. It was a bit of a trap, perhaps. It wasn't there for that first miss. The Greyhound would surely be dead. Rifleman could not get an 18 aid off. And we have Panzer Grenadiers coming around the hedgerow to cause them problems. Pakawis, how many kills? One. 
and seven. Was the second power pack howitzer worth creating? What should he have done instead, perhaps? Answers on a postcard in chat, please. Fans Grenadiers. Looking low. So forced away by the pesky Greyhound, which has got its first kill now. Can he survive? Hail Mary shot, perhaps. Max range! Oh, couldn't quite get the overshot he needed. Ostrup and throw their lives on the line for their newly adopted country of the Third Reich, in this case. I mean, would you... Can you really blame them? At the point, they probably... Uh, were either conscripted or signed up to fight. It was probably 1941-42. And uh, at that point in time, it did look quite bleak, didn't it, in the 1940s? You can't really blame them. Some of them, at least. But let's not get into the politics of history. As we've got a very juicy bunker coming up. This reminds me of Company Heroes 1. Build it faster. Dig. 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 Sorry, guys. This is a great casting. I know. Dig. Ha <laughs> Look at it. It's effing beautiful. That's a lovely bunker. Greyhound still fighting. I'm amazed that Orange Pest has been able to maintain this uh, this battle. I know he's a good player. He's top 15 worldwide right now. But as is Jibber Jabber Jobber. And uh, Triple J just had a superior game in the first 10 minutes, didn't he? Prime Clarity calls it a concrete shit house. Come on, it's a lovely bunker. How dare you? <laughs> Greyhound couldn't quite get the killing blows on these pesky Panzer Grenadiers. Panzer Force currently getting. Oh, we've had a Faust in on the Greyhound. Keep an eye on that. Could the Pat 40 follow up? No, it misses. Where's our next teching choices? What are we looking for here, chaps? What's going to finish the game off? Maybe we can uh, recrew this from there. That would be nice. Ah, we've got a little bit of uh, anti-tank hedgerow tennis. A few misses here and there. I really do... I can't speak highly enough of these trees. Of course, for anybody that knows me personally, I really do like trees. They're beautiful, aren't they? I mean, just look at that, motherfucker. That is a nice tree. Sorry, guys, there's a game going on. Ostrup and pushed away. That's <laughs> four <laughs> coming in with prioritized vehicle mode, but good spotting from the Greyhound. Allows Orange Pest with a nice quick micro there to get a good shot off. And he's held two victory points for a while now. Our opponents are seizing a sector. Duffman says too much info. I'm not so sure, my friend. Some might say it's called having a personality. Panzer Grenadier is pushing in as the Pan Pack 40 is ready for the Greyhound. Again, the Panzer Grenadiers are bleeding. I tell you what, this bleed will matter. I think Jabba Jabba's got job is getting careless. I mean, he's getting bundle nades off here and there, but he's losing Panzer Grenadier's models for fun. And you will notice that he hasn't actually maintained his control for a while now. MG42 is what's stopping the... F well, it's not stopping the flank, is it? Because Stukarelli, which we're now calling it. That is Stukarelli, by the way. That's beautiful, isn't it? That's really nice. Um, that is a flanking route that has not been fully utilised. Pakawi's opening up. Where's the target of choice? Ah, it's a tank. Just like the Fame and Vill approach loading screen. Panzer IVs versus Pakawitzers. Very realistic. Love it. <laughs> Rifleman coming in for the flank on the Ostrup, and they want to get these victory points back. They've still got the central one. Somehow. Let's check on... We do have Battle Phase 3. Do we have Heavy Panzer? Not quite yet. Heavy Panzer Core, of course, no longer costs fuel, just manpower. Major's out, and he's a fighting Major. Can't really do enough DPS, though, it would seem. And the MG's just, like, shrugging him off. Rifleman went deep. And they may get punished for it now. Oh, here comes the bundle nade. The bundle nade of fun. The bundle nade of joy. And he blocks him. <laughs> so he doesn't fall prey to it. Oh, dear. 
Tried to go to Kimbo there as the cluster bombs come down on him. Oh, and he nearly pays the price. Oh dear, oh dear. Meanwhile, we've got a good flank from the lieutenant going north. Orange Best is staying in this game, lads. He's not going anywhere in this best of one. Sometimes, I tell you what, people say best of ones are rubbish, but you can make them fair. If Jibber Jabber Job is stronger as uh, Wehrmacht and Orange Pest says he wants to beat his Wehrmacht in a scrim, you know, that's pretty cool. That's a fair game. We like it. We like it a lot. Reminds me of the good old days of King of the Hill, of course. That was all best of ones, wasn't it? Bazooka against Panzer IV, forcing it away for now, allowing him to continue the cap. More pioneers coming out. He's happy with his army for now, it would seem. Basically, we've not seen the uh, Stuk E. That would have been juicy, wouldn't it? A lot of fuel for Jibber Jabs. Of course, with the Major out. Orange Pest. Could go for a tank shortly. He's waiting for the fuel, and that shows you that he hasn't really had much of it. If you take into account Triple J's fuel count, but if you don't fully utilise it, and you're letting your Panzer Grenadiers bleed constantly by trying to get bundle nades off, that's when you don't capitalise on your victories. Triple J here, in my opinion, my lowly opinion, has not capitalised on his situation. He found himself with a massive lead, penning, pegging his opponent back, but he chose to you know, bleed his Panzer Grenadiers a little bit, wasn't able to keep his economy as efficient as it could have been, and, although he's still probably going to win. Don't get me wrong, he's still probably going to win. But he could have finished the game off by now had he prioritised getting more tanks out IMO. Just an IMO there. But uh, uh, Lieutenant looking likely to die. He's still going to finish the game off by looks of things. He's also going into base. He gets past the uh, AT guns, which have due course reposition. Trying to get the kill. Will he, will he get greedy here? Seeking, providing analysis in chat. He just asked to uh, see the base of, uh, of Jibba Jabba Jobber. And there you go. We do now have double support armor core, everybody. He's gone for two of them. He can now build support armor core tanks twice as fast. This is incredible. This reminds me of Command and Conquer Red Alert from 1997, where building two war factories meant you could get heavy tanks out twice as fast. This guy is next gen, next level. He has a superior tactical mind. Or as uh, Kimbo, a 19-year-old, would say, this is StarCraft 2, not KOTU. Showing the difference in our generational ages there. Two Panzer IVs at the same time, baby. <laughs> He's going to build. That's another possible variant of the joke, isn't it, I guess? Is he going to realise? Is he going to build that? <laughs> there it is. Ever do ironic clapping in chat, please. Ironic clapping. Let's go check out the battle. Things are getting hot here, allegedly. Don't know what it is, but they said it. Orange Best can still win this, in all honesty. He's getting a Jackson as well. That's a beefy choice. That's the correct choice. I love a comeback. And this guy's on the comeback trail right now. How much did that cost him? What are the new costs, everybody, for manpower for the uh, Sport Armor Corps, the Heavy Panzer Corps? Uh, I should really, you know, read patch notes, but when you're as old as me and you've seen as many as me, you're just like, not another patch, please. I've memorised the first several thousand patch notes, but at this point in my life, I'm just over it, you know. I'll just rely on chat to correct me and cast, it'll be fine. Just as long as I understand what's changed, it's alright. Well, that's just not alright, prime clarity, because it doesn't cost any fuel, I know that much. Or am I wrong? Two rifles. Two of every... He needs two Jacksons now. Then he can have a Noah's Ark style build. But he did lose his captain, so no longer two officers. We do see artillery coming down. This is sector artillery. And it's in a pretty good sector. If you're Jibber Jabber Jabber, a very bad sector. If you're these riflemen, keep an eye on them. They could be falling very soon. Watch the retreat path here. 
Has he been lucky? He's tried to block him in. He's been very lucky, but a bundle made finishes the job. Well done by the jibber, jabber master. However, the Jackson is in position, as are the AT guns. Panzer falls in a bad part of town. Greyhound comes in to punish the Panzer Grenadiers. Somehow the Panzer IV survives. And there it is. If this was perimeter overwatch, we'd still have a minute to go. I mean, everybody's loving the new Bayo. It's amazing that Bayo may go from shit tier map to god tier map. Because in all honesty, I'm, I'm saying this for Angry Dutchman that's just tuning in, by the way. This does look like a very, very fucking good map. I, I don't say that lightly. I don't say that easily. But the two hedgerows here are beautiful. You've got nice flanking routes where a Stuka crash. That's epic. You've got this thing. I mean, well, it's beautiful. Also, the cutoffs are really tight. The territorial system overlay oh, is not experimental. It's just standard good company of heroes map making. Jackson comes in. It does not penetrate the Brumbear. We've had the Brumbear is now reborn. Brumbear reborn. Very good. And a Stug 3. So it's wise that he built two support armor cores. Makes so much sense now. Next gen gaming. Jackson with a good shot. Do we see a little bit of uh, armor piercing sabot rounds? Or as HVAP as I call them. Certainly wasn't. Yes, we do! Max range! Wombo combo from the AT guns. And the Jackson comes in with thunderous res assault. Pack 40 is also going to take it out. Orange Pest, like a spring, is now unloading all that potential energy in a disastrous attack for Jibba Jabba Jobba. He's pushing from all angles. The Pack Howitzers have also attained... Good amounts of kills now, by the way. 22 and 7 whilst we've not been keeping an eye on them. And that's exactly what has happened here. Triple J has not kept his eye on the ball. And like a sleeper cell, Orange Pest has attacked behind enemy lines. Very good indeed. Good sustainability of fighting. The ability to stay in the battle like a cockroach in nuclear war. And re-emerge... And, uh, you know, create a new cockroach world order. I'm not saying Orange Pest is a cockroach. I'm just riffing here. Orange Pest is a lovely bloke. And he's trying very, very hard to become a tawny level elite player. He's scrimmed his ass off in the last year. And he's taken the game very seriously. Often gets a little bit um, angry. If he can cool his temperament, I'm sure we do have, a, you know, a contender on the tournament scene. He also has amassed uh, an okay amount of ML points in the early phase before we've actually even had an ML tournament. Cluster bombs coming down. Oh, and the Panzer Grenadiers, that's a squad wipe. Oh, there you go. <laughs> what happened to Orange, to Jibba Jabba Jabba's army? Where's this Panzer Grenadiers? Where's this Ostrup? And they've all died. Oh, no. And all of a sudden, for the first time, we have uh, a change over an army value. Nearly. I think that should update in a second. Showing that we live in the Orange Pest World Order. Jackson already with Veteran C1. And I tell you what, he's got 50 cals out as well now for better sustainability. I mean, we already think he has got himself back into this game. But right now, must be noted, triple... Jay does have the central victory point. He's going to be looking to squeeze his opponent down further. We're going to have a bit of a slug match in the center. Now these hedgerows have been destroyed as well. It's making it into a very longer style map, it would seem. Big sh shot from the bazooka there. Greyhound's got veteracy 3 with its 7 kills. A massive maneuverability. Reinforced repair bunker operating there as the automatrons do their work. He's building another one. He's going for a repair bunker, SimCity. What's the cost of a reinforced repair bunker, somebody, please? I'm going to guess, like, munitions and manpower. Maybe 300, something like that. I bloody don't know. 300 manpower, Tightrope says. Thank you very much, Tightrope. Master League legend, Tightrope, of course. Creating the transition. Back 
how he's working uh, overtime now. Oh, that was a good shot. <laughs> Fuck your automatrons. They don't exist anymore. Lovely stuff. Austrooping in peril. They're currently constructing. That could be a wipe if it hit them, obviously. But it did not. No grenades tacked. He's um, he is going for a second Jackson though, so it is that Noah's Ark build. Panzer IV about to be taken out by the Jackson. There you go. Tell you what, it's not looking too great, is it? However, we do have a Panzer from Triple J. He's trying to uh, remain alive. Thirty-five minutes in, we uh, see that we have a bit of a stalemate. It would seem. No, he's changed it for a Panther. That's the correct decision. I was, I was, I was laughing, and chuckling at the Panzer because I was going to say we could see the beginning of the end because I don't think that was going to have much of a, an effect because now we've got two Jacksons, you know, and a Greyhound. He, I know he has three support weapons, but this is the top level of play. You can't expect a Panzer to annihilate them. Because he'll just spread them out, you know. It'll get one at a time and it just won't be what you want, really. All importantly, though, it would have gotten rid of some of the veterancy on these M1 AT guns. So, I suppose it could have been played well, but it puts your hands in God a little bit. These cluster bombs, they're easier to react to these days. They do take long to come down. You, you can see now that you can react to them in time. Can't react to the Greyhound, though. Unless you've got a... Oh, but he's set himself into a trap. Double Jackson. Let's have that look from that from the south perspective as the Stug and the Pack cover for their bigger brother. He also had the Lieutenant come in from a good angle. But Orange Pest with excellent um, skill profile play there. What, I, what, I, what I'm trying to say with skill profile is he did not get too aggressive. He knew when to uh, relinquish his hold on the trigger. What's he doing there? Jackson's are coming in for another shot, perhaps. No, just a bit of uh, suspect pathing, let's say. Yep, suspect pathing alert. Oh dear, oh dear. Vet 2 Jackson in a dip, tricky spot. However, the vanilla Jackson was waiting. Greyhound hits a Talamine. mine. Great Talamine mine usage by Triple J. Stug in peril. Another Stug comes in. Dane's got a semi somewhere in, in Denmark. Ah. Uh, However, now he's, yeah, he no longer does because one of the Stugs has indeed been taken out. And he is a possible triple cap for the first time for Orange Best. The Greyhound coming out. He's making great use of the first one. Some people might scoff at when a top kind of player goes for a light vehicle late into the game. But um, at this kind of standard of play, you don't forget about your light armor because your pool of APM possible is a lot larger, so you're able to keep the use of these vehicles well into the late game. And you're able to keep um, harassing the flanks and uh, pushing victory points. And uh, that's why these top players build a T-70 or build, uh, in this case, the M8 Greyhound. And the reason I know this is because the original M8 from Company of Heroes 1, um, Co-1, Pros would build them 50 minutes into a game. You know, when there were a fleet of Panzer Fours or whatever on the field, they'd still be building them because they knew that uh, they could make use of them on the lateral edges of the map. The well dodged the uh, Panzer Grenadier grenade there. Now they're just going to hold the line. We do have a northern cap of the victory point there. But, and we don't have the anti-infantry tanks to really push them off there. So he's going to rely on the pack howitzers in the meantime. Let's check out the kills on them. 15 kills on this guy. 24 on the other. The AT guns, for me, are the star of the show. They have um, they've got that machine gun-like rate of fire now. Ground in a spot of bother with a good shot from the pack. 40. Orange Pest is uh, waiting for his opponent. It's coming to the north. It's a standoff in the north. And look at the lineup. It's a three Sturg lineup. That crept up on us. <laughs> what a line. I've never heard that one before. Here comes a big one, you fucking bastards. Oh, that's beautiful. 
<laughs> Never heard that one before. I've been watching this game, playing this game for seven years, and I have still not heard that one. Lovely stuff. But MG42 could get taken out here. Oh, they were indeed, possibly by a stray bullet there from the lieutenant. It looked like. Four Stugs! We're going for a Stug Marder. That's an armed Marder of Sturmgeschutz. Oh my god. If we said that Dane had a semi somewhere, he's now gone full. Full mast, because this is heaven. For the uh, fans of German armoured fighting vehicles of the of the steppe. These originally were of course part of the artillery company of the uh, Wehrmacht and they were eventually repurposed into tank destroyers because quite frankly they did the job better. Low profile, well trained crews in uh, just a tight combo of um, tank fighting badassery. Jibber Jab Jabber of course is going to lose the victory points in the meantime and he's only got 131 left so although Stugs are great He's got four of them, and they're going to go into combat. Let's go on board with the Stugs now. Prioritized vehicle. However, we've also got to keep in mind that the uh, cluster bombs could cause some serious problems for one of the remaining squads. Brumbear's going to lead the Stugs into combat like a sheepdog herding. This uh, very ferocious... No, it's just going to die. It's going to show that thick ass to the Jacksons. Oh, well, no, it was a bait for the Stug Marder. Can they get the shots in? The Brumbear does indeed die. All Stug are trying to repurpose their main guns. And they take out one of the Jacksons. They now need to attack through the hedgerow to take out the remaining Jackson. Here they come. They're getting attacked from the rear by the lieutenant. And there it is. The quadruple Stug attack. They are now down from the un unholy four, four Stugs of the apocalypse. Down to... A dastardly trio. But it was possibly all for nothing. Because the victory points. As we now see the victory points align. We just want 104 flash on for both players at the same time. He's going to need the pack to cap. You know it's situation critical when your pack is capping. Oh dear, oh dear. Panzer Grandiers do have veterans 3 but the pack howitzers hate them. They hate them a lot. Look at that. Oh, look at that. There we go. One of the Stugs goes down. To the... Um, I missed that on camera. Sorry, guys. M1s from afar. However, and the Pack 40 is also taken out and destroyed. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. The last remaining... Oh, there's two Stugs. There we go. We've got a, one over here. So it wasn't all of them that died. Just one. Thank God for that. I was scared for a moment. So he's down to two Stugs and two infantry, one worker unit, 38 population cap. This is not looking great, is it? Don't worry, guys. Steiner is amassing forces south of Berlin, and he will surely save Dribber Jabber Jobber. Everybody not named Prime Clarity, Stern Panther, a Sureva, please leave the room at once. As we see the Jacksons causing the Stugs very, very fatal problems. Shot through the hedgerow perhaps for a little bit of pride. He gets it. However, he disembarks the crew, giving him another capping unit. We do also have a 50 cal versus Panzergrandia situation. Could this be the holy hand grenade that keeps Jibber Jabber Jabber in the game? Oh dear, Stug went in for the ambulance and gets it! He killed the ambulance as he died! What an heroic action there. Oh, the Jackson pushing two of the Panzer Grenadiers out of the capping circle. And the Pakawis rain terror from death from above. Meanwhile, we have a very fatal battle in the north. There's vehicle crew members go in against Ostrupen. One guy remaining. Come on. Do some health damage. Do something. But it was all in vain. Jackson, meanwhile, just completely pushing the Panzer Grenadiers around. Still dodging grenades. Is Orange Pest. Lovely stuff. Forty-four minutes of combat, and this has been a really good game. 
And it is certainly going to be over now. As the Jackson gets a kill? No, it wasn't. It couldn't have been. It just looked like it. It was actually a kill from the infantry. As Triple J calls GG well played. And uh, indeed it was. Well played, sir. Wowee, now that was a game. That was a bloody good game, wasn't it? That was the uh, f f f first game I've ever seen on Bayo 2, and probably you guys have as well. Um, that was fantastic. Really enjoyed that. Orange Pest is, uh, is thanking Pacowies for his uh, glorious comeback, but I'm not so sure you can thank it completely. You know, I think you played well. I think you had a good build order in a time of severe stress. But I think it's also on Jibber Jabber Jobber for not capitalising. He got a little bit overconfident with his Panzer Grenadiers, started to bleed out, and made some very sus suspect um, teching choices.